We've extended our Christmas delivery deadline and we're upgrading all orders from now on to the fastest shipping to make sure they get to you in time for Christmas. Limited supplies and it's only going to be until we run out of supplies. So get your orders in. A huge shout out to the Rose Anvil crew and all the friends, family, loved ones that came in to help to make sure we got all these orders out for Christmas, allowing us to open up a few more orders while supplies last. So check them out below. Rancourt & Co. are keeping alive a true American classic style of footwear that happens to be one of the oldest ways of making footwear in the entire world because they're one of the very last traditional moccasin makers left in the United States. So we're gonna cut this thing in half and run it through our test to figure out what makes this style of footwear so popular and well-loved and why is this one of the hardest and most labor-intensive ways to make footwear. So what is this boot? Well, the brand is Rancourt & Co. The style is the Baxter boot. They weigh one pound, six ounces. They retail for $350, which is kind of crazy. And we'll go over why a little bit later in the video because of how this is built. And they're made in Maine, United States. And the way that this boot is positioned is a hand-sewn mock toe boot built to one-up winter. The mock toe boot is a fashion mainstay that stood the test of time and puts its best foot forward during the cold months of the year. The Rancourt & Co. honors a legacy with their Baxter boot and they've refined it with all of the right weather adjustments. It's cut well above the ankle with unlined Horween tumbled leather, keeping your feet dry and with maximum comfort as you trudge through the snow. Plus it's extra durable lugged sole grips any terrain without missing a beat. And you can buy these via the link in my description through the sponsor of this video, Huckberry, who brought this style out of retirement from Rancourt. And if you don't know who Huckberry is, if you like this channel, there's a high likelihood you're gonna love what they do because Huckberry is the ultimate one-stop shop for gift buying for this kind of heritage, high quality stuff. And if you don't know exactly what they want for Christmas, you can still get them an e-card and the final day to order from Huckberry for guaranteed delivery is on the 20th. So get your orders in. And they even have an impossible to shop for collection, which it's those people that you, they already have everything they want, but they like, they're very particular about the things that they use and buy. This impossible to shop for list is specifically curated for shopping for those people. So I'll put together some of my favorite items from their shop below in the links. And don't forget to get your guaranteed order delivered by Christmas. You got to order by the 20th. And thanks again to Huckberry for sponsoring this video. But let's start looking at the materials of this boot and see what's what, starting with the leather first, because this is a Horween tumbled leather. And Horween is the one of the most famous tanneries in the world. They're based in Chicago. They're really well known for making really soft, supple, and saturated leathers. All their leathers are almost, like you almost don't have to condition them. They're almost wet to the touch and like almost sticky because of how much tanning compounds, oils, conditioners get infused into the leather. And what they've done to make this even softer is they've tumbled it, where they take the hides, they throw in a big drum and it tumbles them around, softens them up, and it gives it what usually looks like this pebble texture on the outside, but I'm pretty sure this is a fake embossed print in the top of the leather, just to give it more of a natural finish, which sometimes can be hiding a cheaper leather underneath, or it can be disguising a top layer of plastic. So we put the lighter to it to see if there's any plastic or top coats on it, and it's a very natural leather. There's nothing on top. That's why you get so much variation. You can see the scars and flaws in the leather and why you get such a bright pull-up effect. And the benefit of all this is these boots are super comfortable right off the bat. You do, it's, it's almost like, it kind of reminds me of a really heavy bag leather, but there's another reason why they use such a soft, supple leather aside from the comfort, and that's due to how this boot is made. And just like I said with like the bag leather, when you're making a bag out of really heavy, heavy leather, it doesn't matter how durable the leather is if you can't get it to contour and shape and take whatever form you're trying to get it to take. And so same thing with this shoe and how it's built. You can't quite use the same styles of leather as other boots because of these complex curves and how it's made. But even though you might assume that they have to use a really thin leather, this leather is still pretty thick at 2.3 millimeters thick. You look at the cross section, it has plenty of that grain pattern on the inside and it performed pretty well on the puncture test. It took 110 pounds to puncture through. So you end up with a very comfortable, malleable and durable leather. Then if you start looking at the inside of this boot, like they said in the description, it's completely unlined. And I love the simplicity of this. You know, there's just no unnecessary stitches or layers on the outside that just add bulk. It's just just about as simple of a construction as you can make, which I really like because it's a moccasin and Native American moccasins was literally just leather wrapped around your foot. So I like that they're mirroring that. And most of Rancourt's boots are lined. This is just a unique exception. Then if you look on the inside, you've got a half sock liner with a little bit of foam underneath. One thing that I can already feel is it doesn't, I don't think it's, it's feathered down to a point. 
I think it has that hard edge that sometimes I, I don't like about half sock liners because it creates a hard lip. Then at the forefoot where that sock liner ends, you're standing on this sidewall that's wrapped underneath. So you're actually standing on the upper of the boot in the forefoot, which is a really unique aspect of why these boots have such a unique feel underfoot because there's no hard edge from where the insole ends and that sidewall begins. It's a seamless transition. Then if we look at the midsole, you've got a nice thick four to five millimeter thick veg tan insole running the full length of the boot. This is gonna give you a little bit more material to break into the shape of your foot, it gives a little bit more rigidity, and it gives you a little bit more ground protection so you don't feel every single crack in the cement. We ran the puncture test and it took 164 pounds to puncture through because you have that big slab of veg tan you have to puncture through. And then the outsole is a very soft rubber outsole. I think they chose this for that winter purpose because it's gonna grip a little bit better in really cold conditions rather than a really hard rubber that just seems to like skate on cold concrete. The downside of that is it's not gonna be nearly as durable as a really hard rubber outsole, but you get the comfort and you get the grip. Because it's really soft, it's only a 40 shore A. Compared to most work boot, rubber is like 70 shore A, so it's very soft. And even from the bar drop test, it bounced up 7.5 inches. So with this outsole, you're up in the top 20 where sneakers usually are. And so that's, that's a good sign that you're gonna get a lot of rebound and it's gonna be a very comfortable outsole. But then to the big thing of this entire boot, the construction, how this thing is made. And this is where that concept of making a heavy leather bag comes into play because the way they make these boots is about as painstaking of a process as there is. Unlike most boots where you take a piece of leather and you wrap it around the toe of the boot underneath of the glass, these boots reverse that and you take that leather and you start at the bottom of the last and wrap it up above tacking it in place every inch or half an inch to create what was a flat plane into a three-dimensional shape. And the hard thing about that is it's not hard to get leather to take a 3D shape because you can stretch leather quite a bit, it'll hold its shape, but the hard thing is getting leather to compress into a three-dimensional shape. So what I mean by that is it's easy to get it to stretch over the sidewall and take this shape, but as soon as you start puckering this around the toe, and that's where you're taking a length of leather and condensing it and puckering it in an even fashion so that when they go to trim that down, they can sew on this top piece by hand with this really heavy, thick wax cord. So it takes the most difficult process of hand making boots, reverses it, and makes it even more difficult to make a pair of moccasins. So that's a big reason why I, I really was surprised that these are only $350 because most boots in this price range that have these components, at least from the outside, are usually machine made. They're a lot more automated process and we'll compare them to Red Wings after we cut them in half. Exact same price range with a very similar style of boot and the, the processes are completely different. Rancourt being very labor intensive and hard to do versus Red Wing a very streamlined mass produced production. So I'm assuming there's gonna be some concessions and materials and quality somewhere in this boot to get it down to that $350 price point. So let's cut it in half and find out. Okay, we got it cut in half, so let's see what's on the inside and how they got this boot down to $350 while still being a hand-lasted boot. So, let's see what's inside. So how is this hand-lasted mock toe boot made by a small company here in the United States priced at the same price as the iconic Red Wing mock toe made by a significantly larger company? Well, let's do a light comparison. And this is not a direct comparison. This is more of a benchmark for this price point when it comes to components, techniques, and uh, materials. So the first thing is it's just a very simple boot, which I really like. I like the simplicity of this. It's, it harkens back to the old school moccasins, but there are some materials that they could have upgraded in here to make this a better and high quality boot, like this little teeny counter. And it's just a tiny counter, just enough to give that heel some stability without it dropping. It's made out of the same material that Red Wing uses for their counters. It's just leatherboard. You also have compressed cardboard underneath of that half sole that the shank is riveted to, which is pretty common to see in about $300 in under boots. You can see there's a little bit of loose grain on this panel. 
So maybe they're using more of the hides because it's such a soft and supple leather where they're not as worried about having a little bit of loose grain in there so they can get more yield per hide. That might help bring the price down. There's no rubber slip sole that would help the outsole bond better to the rest of the boot, especially for winter use where when water gets in leather, it expands and shrinks at a different rate than rubber, which can cause that, fail, that glue to fail and delaminate. And something that's just worth noting is this stitch that runs around the outside that's on top of the midsole is a fake stitch. It's just decorative. The actual structural stitch that holds the upper to the midsole is on the inside here. It's this Blake stitch that runs all the way around the inside of the boot. But there are a couple things that it has the edge over the Red Wing on, like you've got a little layer of canvas as a squeak pad between the insole and the midsole. You have Horween leather from a, a reputable tannery. Not that it's better than Red Wing, but it's not a cheap leather and it's got that name brand. The boot is hand lasted instead of machine lasted like the Red Wings. The mock toe stitch is hand sewn versus machine sewn on the Red Wings. So it's, it's a simpler boot, but it's more difficult and more labor intensive to make. So to me, it's it's a pretty easy case to say that this is well worth that $350, especially when you do that direct comparison to the Red Wing Mock Toe and factoring in the US labor and the size of the business and the handmade elements of this boot. To me, it's an easy case to say this is well worth $350. And so what makes this boot so well loved? Well, I think it's that, that classic main style of construction, the moccasin construction where you have a seamless transition from the footbed to the sidewall. And it's just a really lightweight, comfortable boot that you can wear pretty much anywhere except for the winter. I don't, I just don't see this being a winter boot. You know, the outsole is a little bit wintry. This is just a, a mock toe boot. It's not, I wouldn't say there's anything overtly winter about it. And how does it rank on our Mocktober board for this year? I'd put it here and for the overall board, I'd put here. So check these boots out, leave a link in the description. Rancourt is making some of the last truly American made moccasins. They're doing it the old school traditional way. And I always have a little bit of a soft spot for American made goods because of how hard it is to compete with these bigger brands using foreign mass production, using much more streamlined processes to make a subpar boot at a lower price. And yet Rancourt is still maintaining all those core ethics and values that were built into the brand nearly 70 years ago. Somehow in 2023, they're still making this boot the old school way and I can't help but love it. So huge props to Rancourt for what they're doing. So let me know what you guys think and thank you guys so much for everything you do. Check these out, the link in my description and see ya.